Hello everyone. Today we will be studying the discovery of cathode rays, as well as learning about what cathode rays are and some of the first observations that were made. Now a cathode ray tube is simply a vacuum tube, that is a glass tube with all the air taken out, with electrodes at either end. When a high voltage is applied to the electrodes, electrons jump from the cathode, the negative terminal, to the anode, the positive terminal. Now as they do this, they gain a lot of energy because they're being accelerated through an electric field. And some electrons collide with air particles and that produces a green glow, which is noticeable. And this is what creates the green glow you can see here in the cathode ray. Now this glowing was first discovered in 1838 by a chap called Michael Faraday. He was experimenting with vacuum tubes at the time. Um, all matter at this time was thought to be made of atoms. So no one had any idea what electrons were, and no one could tell what the cathode rays were. So the invisible beams of electrons coming from the cathode uh, were named cathode rays, because they came from the cathode. Now, cathode rays were very interesting to scientists, and so they were studied for much of the 19th century. Uh, as technology advanced, uh, people made better vacuum tubes, and so you could do better studies on the properties of cathode rays. And a very large number of investigations were conducted on cathode rays during this time, in the, eight, in the 1800s. So some of the observations that scientists made on cathode rays were that cathode rays could turn a paddle wheel, they heated up targets that they struck, they were deflected by magnetic fields, they penetrated thin metal sheets, and they had properties independent of the metal in the cathode, which meant that whether the cathode was made of tin or iron or whatever, the cathodes stayed the same. So there must be some phenomenon to do with the electricity rather than the metal in the cathode. So a few observations and conclusions that the scientists drew from these things were uh, when the rays cast sharp shadows of objects inside the tube, they assumed that the rays had to travel in straight lines and could be blocked by metal. Uh, the rays caused paddle wheels to move. And so they decided that, well, the rays must have momentum and mass, like particles, to turn the paddle wheels. Uh, the rays are deflected by magnetic fields. Well, the rays must be electrically charged, so they must be made out of a stream of particles. And it seems like we're getting closer to the discovery of the electron. But in fact, this was not the case, because there were two other very confusing observations. Rays were not deflected by electric fields. And that meant, the scientists thought, that the rays could not be electrically charged otherwise they would have been deflected. And the rays pass through thin metal sheets without interacting, which meant that the rays must be made of waves and not particles. And so scientists couldn't quite understand what was going on with cathode rays, but we'll learn more about that in the next talk. So this ends the theory. We have learned today about the discovery of cathode rays and some of the initial observations and conclusions that the scientists studying them drew. Now onto some questions. Question one. Which scientist is credited with the first observation of cathode rays? Now, let's consider the options. A, J.J. Thompson. Now, we've heard of J.J. Thompson before in one of the previous presentations, and he, in fact, in fact, discovered the true nature of cathode rays and what they were made of, and electrons. But he wasn't the first to observe them. He was, in fact, born after their first observation. Is it Eugene Goldstein, then? Well, no, he was the scientist who named cathode rays after he discovered that they were coming from the cathode, but he wasn't the first to observe them. Heinrich Hertz contributed a lot to the field of physics, and he did, in fact, do a lot of experiments on cathode rays, but he wasn't the first to discover them. And that is, in fact, credited to Michael Faraday, who, although he studied more magnetism and electricity than cathode rays, was credited with first noting the green glow that they produced on a tube. Question two, which of these observations made in the 1800s was misleading and contradicted by later experiments? And so we can solve this question by knowing that cathode rays are made of electrons. So let's go through the options. A, rays can be blocked by pieces of metal. Well, we know that electrons can be blocked by thick enough metal, so this doesn't seem too misleading. B, rays pass through very thin sheets of metal without damaging them. Now, the scientists of the day couldn't explain this, but in fact, electrons can pass through very thin sheets of metal without damaging them. So this was never contradicted. Is it D then, the magnetic fields affect the path of cathode rays? Well, we know from 
uh, our previous knowledge that charged particles in magnetic fields uh, get a, can be, have their path affected by the magnetic fields. So this is a correct observation. And so then we have D. Electric fields do not affect the path of cathode rays. This was in fact a misleading observation because we know that charged particles are affected by strong electric fields. The reason for this lack of a deflection by electric fields we'll learn about later on. This is the correct answer, D. Question 3. Cathode rays are only observed in vacuum tubes and not in air. So why would it be that you need a vacuum to observe cathode rays? And as I've touched on before, when they're traveling in air, electrons tend to lose a lot of energy. This means that the electrons can never gain enough energy to create the green glow that's used to observe cathode rays. Question 4. When a magnetic field is applied to a cathode ray tube, as shown here, how would, the path of the cathode ray, how would the path of the cathode rays change, if at all? Now, we can solve this by using the right hand rule. The cathode ray is made of electrons, which are negatively charged particles. This means that the positive current flows in the direction opposite to the motion of the cathodes. Using the right hand rule, we can use the fingers to represent the magnetic field, which must be moving downwards. If the cathodes are moving in this direction, the force must be towards you. And we find that this is indeed the answer. This concludes the section. Today we have learned about cathode rays and their true nature, as well as their first observation and discovery, and some of the observations and conclusions that scientists drew about them.